Welcome back to the series where I'm showing you how to actually build out software and its back end. If you're just joining me now, in the last episode, which will be in the playlist down below, we did the functions ability. In that specific video, I showed you how to create Python-based functions. We went ahead and created a function that connects to OpenAI's API, therefore integrating artificial intelligence into our software. Therefore, this is episode six. And if you're confused, you're like, whoa, whoa, what just happened? I just landed on episode six. Check out the playlist. Make sure to leave a like before you leave as we're done with functions. Avita Zen. Today's video, we're going to go over the ability for storage in our backend. Storage is a very ambiguous term here. This encompasses PDFs, videos, any type of file. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can have it so your user can reset their profile image. Therefore, in this video, you're going to learn the logic to set it up for images, but this applies to any type of file format. Therefore, let's begin. To start off here, let's go ahead and log in, create an account. The purpose of today's tutorial is we're going to add a little icon here that's going to allow us to click upload, and we're going to upload a new profile image that we'll store in the backend database. Obviously, we have a user, we have their unique ID, their UID, which is this right here. This is how we identify that this is the user themselves. So for example, for Orange Raccoon right there, we know that this is their user identifier. We're going to be leveraging this in the storage path that we'll create together. As you'll see, storage is a whole separate section here when it comes to Firebase. First question might be is, Corbin, why is that? That's because of the fact that when we store stuff here in the Fire Store, this is going to be string-based data, URL links. I like coffee, chicken, olive, like this is text based storage, number based storage, very much binary in the sense. Therefore, when storing actual files or video files, .mp4s, .pngs, .jpegs, whatever it may be, .pdfs, you use storage. Check out episode two or three, I believe. This is where we set up our storage bucket and set up the logic to do like a coin flip, whether the user is a cat profile image or a dog profile image. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to use the same storage bucket here, but we're going to create a new folder. And the purpose of this folder is for the unique information associated with each user. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just say profile image or profile picture. So this is going to be your base folder. It's like the global folder. From profile picture, this is where the next leg here is going to be the user's UID as the folder and then the image associated with that. That will make more sense as we get to the code here. But for now, we've set it up how we want to set it up. That's in Firebase, though we need to actually make sure it's running in our emulator as well. Therefore, we got to come down here and what you'll notice is in our firebase.json, we got to make sure we add a storage port here. If you're not familiar of what I'm saying here, remember when we launch our emulator, this is like our own little bubble. Localhost 3000 is like the fake little front end with no internet, how we can create a front end. Our fake little back end is Firebase emulator start, which are referenced by all these different ports. Therefore, we need to create a port for storage. Let's start off by doing that then. We're going to go ahead and open a chat with cursor AI. We're going to make sure we select firebase.json, but also select your firebase.js. As you remember, these communicate with each other. So right off the bat in our firebase.js, we got to ensure that we're importing storage here so we can leverage it outside of our application. Here we go. Okay, we want to launch the storage emulator. So make sure this line shows up in the port in the .json, firebase.json, and the .js export the storage so we can use it elsewhere. Hit enter and we should get a relevant code. It looks like I used up my free... So we're going to have to do a smaller version of cursor, which is cursor small. So we got our port here of storage. Coming back over here, we go to our firebase.json, scroll down, and we'll add it right here. Make sure you add a comma. Let's get rid of this comment. We don't need that. We're going to go there. Coming over to the firebase.js, it doesn't look like it outputted perfectly, but we get the general idea here. We need to get the storage and the functions here. So we're going to add these lines. Let me go and shrink down. Coming back over to firebase.js here, we need to import get storage, connect storage emulator. Looking good. This is like the other logic that we saw earlier with the functions. We're going to paste that here. Nice. And then we're going to scroll down here. We're going to make sure we initialize it with const storage, get app storage. I like it. I'm going to go and do that. Notice how we do this with all the other things. Get auth, get fire store, get functions. Looking good so far. And then finally, we need to make sure we have this nice little line here to ensure we get no local host cores errors. Connect storage emulator, if I can speak, 9199. Not 911. And then finally, the storage bucket. Storage right there. Good to go. We did a lot of this in the past tutorial, so this should start making more sense to you. As you know, the Firebase.js is basically our way of accessing all the abilities of Firebase within our front end and our back end. Mostly our front end, though. So far, so good. We've successfully imported and structured our storage bucket. Now, if you haven't already, what I encourage you to do is let's rerun the emulator here because now we have a new port that we want to run with. Firebase emulator start. And for us to confirm whether or not this is live, we're gonna to go to our localhost 4000. It actually looks like I forgot one step here, which is gonna be the Firebase init for our configuration. Let's go and do that, Firebase init. And I'm actually remembering I did forget that because what I did in the previous tutorial was I just referenced the links to those fixed profile pics of the dog and the cat. I didn't actually initialize it yet. So let's do that. As we know, Firebase init, 
allows us to access all the different abilities in Firebase. We're going to go to a storage here. We're going to hit space. We're going to hit enter. Everything should just be default here. Enter. And we're good to go. So far, so good. Start the emulator. Here we go. Loading in the storage rules. Perfect. Coming back over to localhost 4000, we should see it on. Here we go. It is on. And then if we go to storage here, we have our storage bucket. Looking good here. Now, obviously, if you want to enable anything else, such as real-time database emulator, follow the same steps but reference that kind of terminology when importing it to your firebase.js and .json. From now though, we are going to go, let's go to dashboard.js. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to give the user the capability to import their own image, therefore change their profile pic. As someone might log in and be like, you know what? I don't like that cat. I don't like it. So we got to change it. Let's do that. To get this working, we're going to have to add a couple files to this chat. Obviously, we're going to need the dashboard.js and we're going to go ahead and need the firebase.js so it has context of where we're getting the storage bucket. In addition, let's make sure we add the dashboard.css. Now look at the prompt. All I did was this. I went ahead and pointed out the very specific piece of code that is the profile image. That little circle right there, that code that's associated with that, I pasted it into the prompt. And then I simply said this. We can upload a new image and also have it so the max file size is 5 gigs. Also, the storage path, let's do profile picture, which we identified before, UID, image name. That's it. Hit enter, get your code. And of course, you can get the code for free in the description down below in the GitHub repo. So make sure you leave a like. It's completely free. It's right there. So let me go ahead and walk you through this code though. First major thing, you may run into an error right off the bat where it's like, you don't have access to this. This storage path, you don't have access to. Don't worry. To fix that, we're going to come down to our storage.rules. Now, right here is where we set up the rules of who has access to what depending on their authentication and admin level. For right now, we're going to allow a user to read and write from this path. I went ahead and identified the path. Match, profile picture, UID. Notice how it's smart enough to understand that user ID is a variable. Image name. Perfect. And then we're going to do the next line here, which is going to allow a user who is authenticated to access this path. This basically makes it so that they can upload an image and have no issues. Therefore, coming back to the code here, notice what we do. From our firebase.js, we are importing storage. That's what we referenced earlier. Coming down here, I went ahead and re-imported the font awesome icon that we used on our homepage from earlier tutorials so we can get a nice little upload icon, therefore allowing me to use the icon FA upload, which you'll see pretty soon here. And then finally, we went ahead and imported the relevant things we need in order to actually do this. Ref, upload bytes, get download URL from Firebase slash storage. Therefore, in your output for your code, if you don't see any of that, something might have messed up. Not necessarily the icons, more in the sense of the imports from Firebase. Now coming down here, it's pretty simple on the logic. So the idea is that obviously we're doing handle file change. We're changing the profile image. So maybe we want to do handle new image for profile, whatever you want to call it. Scrolling down here, the first important piece of code here is setting max file sizes. Now this applies to anything, whether we're talking about videos or PDFs, everything in between, you want this line here. You want to do file.size and then identify the max amount of size you're willing to upload. Why is this important? Because the last thing you want to happen is a user uploads like a 100 gig file. Not only is this extremely expensive at scale, but also like, why are they uploading a 100 gig file? That's a lot. <laughs> so whatever it may be, in reality, this shouldn't be five gigs for a profile image, maybe max of two, maybe even max of one. Just set limits. You don't want to be overpaying at scale. Furthermore, notice how we're identifying the specific path here. Profile picture, which we made before, the user's UID, and then the file name. Whatever the file name is on their computer, that's how we're going to store it. From there, we go ahead and get the download URL, which we then reflect in the user's profile image, which you can see right here. Now, typically in this logic, what it'll do is it'll fall back to the original profile image of the dog or the cat if it doesn't exist. And if it does exist, it will use the user's specific, unique image they uploaded. Let me show you this live. So I've come back to my image here and I'm like, you know what? I don't like that cat. I want a dog. So to do so, right now I have it set up where we have a nice little upload icon here. I click it, and what you'll notice is that by me clicking that, it's going to pop up like this. Pretty nice. And we're able to click the specific file we want for a profile image. I also want you to notice how we set parameters on the file type. So for example here, I'm not able to upload a zip. I'm not able to install cursor again. I'm not able to upload a video because I identified that in the code. For your upload process, if it's like only video should be accepted or only PDF should be accepted, identify that in the code. How Corbin, put it in a cursor AI chat, be like, hey, I only want this size file and this type of file. It's very simple. For me though, I wanna change this to a dog, double click, and we officially have a dog profile pic. That concludes this episode. Make sure you leave a like. It's completely free and it helps me out here. In the next episode, we're gonna be checking out analytics, showing you how to connect this to Google Analytics, which is actually pretty prevalent for us to understand one, just how is our software doing, but two, for conversion metrics such as sign up and purchase. But for now, we set up the storage, we're good to go, and I'll see you in the next video. We have storage.
it's been stored. Two random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.